Welcome to Awake Ones. My name's Lorraine Flaherty. I'm Alexandra Wenman. And today, all the way from Cyprus, we have our wonderful guest, George Lizos, who is a spiritual teacher and an intuitive, and he's the author of Be The Guru. The Guru. Yes. Which I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited about. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank for you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for, for coming <laughs> and joining us. So, please talk to us about you. So, as I said, my name is George Lizos. I'm a spiritual teacher and intuitive. And my book is called Be the Guru, a step-by-step -step guide to becoming your own spiritual teacher. And basically, the, uh, how the book came up is a very interesting story. So let me start from there. Yes. So, as you can tell from my accent, I am not from the UK. I'm not American. I am from Cyprus, a teeny tiny island <laughs> in the Mediterranean, which us, as tiny, tiny islands are, they are a bit conservative. So growing up in Cyprus, I was always uh, the outcast in society. I always felt like I was different from other kids my age. I didn't like football, I didn't do the usual stuff that boys did. So as a result, I felt out of the ordinary. Instead, I loved spending time out in nature, I loved meditating, chatting to the fairies and the flowers <laughs> and the trees and the mermaids. So. From a young age, I realized that I was different, so um, I had this need to be accepted and to fit in. So I started monitoring every single thing about me, trying to make myself seem normal. Mm -hmm. So throughout that childhood, that time in my life, as a result of being different, I was being bullied at school, uh, people were making fun of me, I didn't feel like um, I, I belonged in that society. So around the time of um, 13 years old, I realized that I was gay. Now, by that time in Cyprus, homosexuality was considered to be a crime. Up until 1994, I think, or eight, it was considered to be a crime. So um, while growing up, that word gay or homosexual was, you couldn't hear it. Uh, people didn't talk about it. And when they did talk about it, they talked about it behind closed doors, in silent voices, and with a lot of uh, insinuations about it. Like, gay people were considered to be criminals and pedophiles. Even so, so recently, that's incredible. Even so recently, yeah. yes. Um, so, I couldn't let that word come into my uh, collection of labels that I had on me as weird, uh, unsociable, and all, antisocial, and all these kind of, uh, of labels. So I thought, okay, the only way I can make it in the world, in society, is if I change myself. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna change myself from gay to straight, one step at a time, like I approach every single other thing in my life. I wanted to make my parents happy, I wanted to be accepted by the school system, by society, and the only way I learned throughout my life was to change myself, to fit in, to be normal. So I started suppressing my urges, I started suppressing my authenticity. I reached the, um, the level where I was monitoring, monitoring the way I walked, the way I talked, uh, the way I acted, I even tried to control my thoughts. So two years of this hell I put myself in when I couldn't change myself because I was born this way, I thought the only way out is just to put an end to my life, to end it all, and just make, make everyone happy. That was my only uh, way out, or so I thought. But just before I took those pills, because I had prepared like a handful of pills, I took the first two, but in that moment, something magical happened. In that moment of making the decision that, okay, that's the end of it, that surrendered everything. I had an epiphany, it's like a, a light came within me, the light that I had as a kid, as a playful kid, enjoying nature and being out. That light just ignited with, within me once again. And I realized that I had a choice. Mm -hmm. And my choice was to F society, to F everybody, and just learn to accept me and learn to love me. The problem was, I didn't know how mm -hmm. to love me. I didn't know how to accept me because nobody told me how to love myself. Uh, nobody, uh, I didn't feel that I know ever anybody loved me up to that mm -hmm. point. Uh, but it didn't really matter because what did matter was my willingness mm -hmm. to love myself. And that is the willingness that changes everything. When the universe, when you are angels, when, um, when source, when our guides 
see that we're willing to change, they bring into our lives the right people, the right circumstances, everything makes perfect sense that leads to lead yourself to that moment of grace, to that moment of connecting back into your authenticity. Mm -hmm. So long story short, that's where I entered my spiritual path. I started reading spiritual books about magic. Harry Potter was actually at the beginning of my path. I was reading Harry Potter, which was a very fun way for me to start exploring yeah. spirituality. I love the idea of merging magic with love. That made a lot of sense uh, to me. So I started bringing all that together. You can heal your life came up, feng shui, dream interpretation, meditation. And that culminated to be the guru, a step-by-step -step guide to becoming your own spiritual teacher which is basically, it follows the steps I follow and the tools I, that help me um, not care what other people think about me and find all the happiness, all the wisdom, all the support that I needed and I felt that I had to get from the outside world from within me. Yeah, absolutely. So it basically, uh, it's a journey through owning your authenticity, through empowering yourself. So self-empowerment is what it teaches mm -hmm. rather than seeking empowerment from outside of you. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically mm -hmm. my life story. <laughs> so, so, I was just going to say, and you've come full circle now, haven't you? Because you're back living in Cyprus. How's it going? <laughs> yes, that, that is so interesting because there's another interesting story about that. So the aim was uh, after I empowered myself in Cyprus, I'm like, okay, I'm going to leave this island now. I, I can't be myself fully here. So I left to pack my bags. I came here uh, in the UK, I went to Bristol, and um, I studied geography there. Now that's very interesting, I studied geography. I mean, <laughs> totally relevant to what I'm doing right now. Then I did a master's in business management. Again, totally relevant to what I'm doing right now, which is a very interesting point. Because up to that point in my life, I never considered that spirituality could be part of my life purpose because I grew up in a society where anything spiritual that wasn't Christian was considered to be the work of the devil. So even though in the closet, in the spiritual closet, I was uh, chatting to my angels and communicating with the fairies, even after I empowered myself, I couldn't even uh, dare to tell people, tell my family, my true beliefs. Yeah. So I kid myself that I wanted to do geography or that I wanted to do lots of different other stuff that were more accepted mm -hmm. while at the same time ignoring the fact that my life purpose was to be a spiritual teacher. And that's when again grace came in, that's when source came in and just scooped me in and just, uh, scooped me in and just uh, transformed everything for me. Uh, while I was coming from, from university one day. I thought I wanted to do musical theater after geography. So for three <laughs> like years, a bit of segue, yeah. but <laughs> so three years taking acting classes, singing classes, dancing, ballet, contemporary tap dancing. I had it all ready to audition. Okay. Walking home from university, and I had another epiphany, such as the epiphany that I had when I was uh, fifteen. I'm like, why would I do music theater? Like me and music theater seemed so far apart in that moment. So like instantly. I'm like, okay, I, I'm filling the guidance right now. Let's just follow the guidance. So I went back home. I went through the university list of subjects and like business management. Ah, that sounds interesting. By that time, I hated anything to do related, anything related with business because my dad was an accountant and I felt this pressure to be, uh, to be that as well. Um, but I'm like, okay, there is some, some truth behind it. I ended up applying and getting into business school here at Imperial College London, right. uh, studying business. But the epiphany wasn't business. The epiphany was I wanted to be a spiritual teacher. It's time to own my light. It's time to come back into my authenticity. And business management was a tool that will help me launch my own business eventually. What is the point for everybody watching um, uh, right now of this story is that we're already following our life purpose. We're just in denial of it. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. We're just in denial of it because um, of all the limiting beliefs that uh, society has taught us, because of all, uh, all, all that patriarchy has done to form um, our perspective of the world, mm -hmm. of what's right and what's wrong and what's the right path to success. There are no right paths to success. So, my, um, really what I'm trying to get across here is that every single moment when we're happy, when we're, uh, when we're not following all those stereotypical rules and we're being attracted to what, uh, to what lights are up, 
to what make us feel joyful and blissful, we're really following our life purpose. Mm -hmm. When we go back to our childhood and remember what made us happy then, talking to fairies, <laughs> in my case. Can I just say, he's just mentioned fairies, but while he's been talking, little sparkles of light have been going on. <laughs> have you been seeing them as well? Aura. And like, he's, he's sitting here sparkling, and then he goes, and talking to fairies, and I'm like, right. It's my garden of fairies, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't help them. <laughs> they came with you. Yeah. It's so true, George, following your heart, really following your truth. It's incredible. And every single day, whenever we're happy, like mm -hmm. if everybody could just take a moment right now and just think, what is the happiest time of my day? What is the happiest time of my day? And what am I doing during that time? Mm -hmm. Who am I talking to? What am I, um, what am I involved in? Mm -hmm. What am I reading? What's going on around me? Those moments hold such important clues as to what our life purpose is and why should we care about following our life purpose? Mm -hmm. Why should we care as light workers? Because we're light workers. And what are light workers? Mm -hmm. They are souls who have been incarnated time and time again on this planet with the aim of making the world a more loving and more peaceful place, mm -hmm. of ascending the vibration to the new golden age. And here now is the time to do that. Mm -hmm. So we've came forth. We have this, our general light worker purpose of making the world a kind of place of ascending to the, to the new golden age. But the, the real only tool that we have to do that right now is our life purpose. Mm -hmm. Our very specific mission that only us can fulfill, that without us the world would be clueless as to how to go about fulfilling. If only we realize how much weight we have on our shoulder in a good sense, in the mm -hmm. good sense of the weight. Like this responsibility, this duty to be the light and not just be the light to express our light in physical, practical steps because the world ain't gonna change. Mm -hmm. Sitting in meditation circles all day long and just praying for world peace <laughs> and just visualizing the world being healed, the world will change when we rise up, when we write books, when we, when we do interviews such as this, when we change people's perspe mm -hmm. perceptions, when we get out in the streets and march for what we want. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just getting emotional thinking about this right now, <laughs> talking jokes. specifically about, I, I went back to Cyprus, coming back to your original yeah. question, it's yeah. funny how it all comes back to that. Um, I went back to Cyprus and I attended my first gay pride. Wow. When I left Cyprus, gay pride wasn't a thing, I mean, nobody was talking about gay and homosexuality, gays and homosexuality. And it was such a proud moment getting to walk the streets where I used to be bullied in. Right proudly Amazing. holding the flag and having everybody around me clapping and applauding and just accepting. Yeah. 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 So that's how the world changes. Yeah. 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 We feel our light, but feeling it isn't enough anymore. Mm. Past light workers have done that. Mm. It's our job to rise up, get out on the streets, do the work, create the change Being that we want to see. Being our authentic selves, right? Yeah. yeah. In practical steps. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Cyprus is going good. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. And, sorry, Laurie, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and, and you, for your family now, obviously, yeah. you know, you're going to be out of several closets. I'm out of the, the all, spiritual all the closets. and the, 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 you know. Destroy them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So Busted. they are no I'm more. Just, I destroyed all the closets. How have your family responded to this new you that has yeah. come out yeah. and, you know, making a difference? Weirdly, all the fears that I have about getting rejected by my parents yeah. were all in my head. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's the funny thing about fear, yeah. <laughs> basically. So I told my, my dad was the last one I came out to. Mm -hmm. I was 25. It was after I published my book. You see, right. after my authenticity, I owned everything. Still couldn't tell him. Wow. And when I told him, his response was, yeah, my, I knew. My best friend is a transsexual. And you didn't know that. That's just brilliant. <laughs> and that was the one person you'd been the most oh nervous to God. tell. Oh, bless you. I mean, it's interesting how the universe just isn't orchestrates it? stuff like that, isn't it? We build up ideas in our own heads. Yeah. And fears in our own heads yeah. all the time, yeah. don't we? I know. Yeah. How incredible. You know, fear is so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, fear is so interesting because I found there are so many tools, spiritual tools to overcome fear, like kundalini meditations and meditations and just mantras and crystals. But the most powerful tool I've learned to overcome any kind of fear, first of all, um, after you go through like an, a, an aborted suicide attempt, mm -hmm. 
fear dissipates, mm -hmm. but not for long. It's interesting. You, you, at first you go like YOLO and you just do it. You take action. I mean, I've been through worse, yeah. so I'm just going to take action. But then eventually it gains its strength. It's like it's a sneaky little creature. It just yeah. comes back into you and just grows stronger and stronger. So I found that the only way that fear goes away completely is when you take the ego out of the way. Mm -hmm. Because the fear can only possess the ego. Mm -hmm. When you take the ego out of the way and you realize it's not my purpose, really. It's source's purpose expressed through me. I'm just a tool. And who are you, George? to be afraid to follow your purpose? Who are you to deny people of your gifts and talents? Who do you think you are to do this to other people? So when you do that, mm -hmm. and you take the ego out of the way, you take yourself, your selfishness out of the way, oh, I'm a spiritual teacher, blah, 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 and you realize I'm purely a tool, a channel that source can use in whichever way they see fit to flow through information through my body, then that fear can't possess that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it can't true. even pretend to possess it. Because it goes both ways, doesn't it? You know, we we have like the fear of what people think of us. Then we have the fear that people are going to think we're in ego if we step out. Yeah. Then we have the fear that we'll go into ego <laughs> if we step out. And then we have the fear of like, yeah. what if I get it wrong? And yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. I and, think. and what, what yeah. commonality do these fears have? The ego. Yeah. So when you take it out of the way, no fear. Yes. Although I do, <laughs> I do think sometimes we do bash our egos a little bit. Yeah, yeah. A little yeah. bit much. They are necessary. It's necessary. We yeah. need it. And I think what we need to do is I we agree. need to put it in balance. So we need to accept that a healthy ego, where we love ourselves, we value ourselves, we accept who we are, bringing that ego back into a healthy yes. perspective so that it can be united and, and work with us, not against us. I think that's the point, isn't it? Exactly. We have to realize that our ego is not our enemy, exactly. really. And that's it what's is happened. Part, that's what makes us human. Yeah. George Lizzo is an ego. My body is an ego. My clothes are, my, are an ego. The, uh, my Instagram photos are part of my ego. But the difference is, are you using your ego to teach a message of love or fear? Yeah. Exactly. Are you yeah. letting your ego control you or are you letting the soul control the ego? Yes. So as long as you keep the ego in check, you're like, you're part of the family now, mm -hmm. let's all go to a journey together, but don't touch the wheel. <laughs> it's oh, no. like, don't take liberties now. Yeah. Do you ever post stuff, George? Like, oh, this is like stuff I go through, because I'm yeah. writing a lot of poetry, and then yes. lately I've started putting a few messages as to how the poetry came through, and obviously, like all of us, follow the guidance, and exactly. you know when it's aligned because you get a good feeling about it. Mm. But there's still a little part of my brain that goes, are you really? Are you really gonna post this? There's people on here you used to work with in the magazine industry. There's people on here you went to school with. This is gonna be a bit weird for them. Are you gonna post this? And then I go, hell yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> I'm just gonna do it and be authentic. And the minute I put it up, I think I put one up the other day, which was a, a poem that came through in Glastonbury. Yeah. And I was channeling Mary Magdalene. I thought a lot of people, you know, might not know yes. that I did. And it was, you know, and it just feels so good. And the amount of people that, when you follow that truth, come in and say, thank you, thank you for being authentic. Thank you, you know. It's one of the reasons why we do this show is to bring these authentic conversations mm. to the fore because so many people, it might be weird for some people, but the weird is great because we're all weird in our own way. Yeah, so the weird we're professional the better. weirdos. Oh my God, I love being a professional weirdo. <laughs> it's like if we don't talk about it, how's it yeah. going to become normal? You know, how's it going exactly. to be accepted? Because you know? we're all in our little heads thinking about our own thoughts and feeling that we're like outcasts and we're like monsters. Yeah. But when we realize that when we share our authenticity, then that authenticity goes out there and finds other people that match it and brings them back to us. Yeah. And that's, what we, that's how we create our tribe. Yeah. That's how we create our bubble. <laughs> We have, we have no connection, yeah, no. just <laughs> link or you know, synchronicity with this guy at all, do we? I'm like speaking this. our language. Vibing together. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to let ourselves be seen in order to find each other and you know, yeah. there has to be, if you hide behind the closet doors, how are you going to ever find the ones that resonate? And you know what? Lightworkers have been hiding behind closed doors yes. for thousands of yeah. years. Yeah. Well, and now it's not the time to do it. Now we have nothing to fear. Yeah. Because uh, nobody's here. Nobody's out to get us. 
nobody's here to, to persecute us. Now we have. Oh, and if they freedom. if they try, I think they can try. Of us yeah. now that they can try. Although, although, let's be fair, in some countries it is still it is. is. So it we is. again we have to yeah. realize and appreciate just how incredibly lucky we are yeah. to be in a world where now things are yeah. accepted and we are safe in practicing mm. these things. I don't ever take for granted mm. the fact that uh, we are now able to step out and do these things which we would have been burnt at the stake for and most of us in our other yeah. lifetimes will have been through that persecution but I think part of that fear is also that memory I think for a lot of people I know I past life it. memories in the cellular it, exactly cellular in the cellular yeah. I, I remember you know I, we've talked about this before one of the first past lives that I did with the question of why am I blocked why am I not stepping out I've done all the training why am I not doing it and I went into a lifetime where I'd been yeah burn at the stake. So I think that there is that memory in there for a lot of people. Anyone that's walking the spiritual path will have had other lifetimes mm -hmm. and there will have been persecution because we would have been trying to bring our gifts forward and I think it's really important now that as we all work together, we rise up together in our tribe, as you said, that, that there is that safety in numbers. Yeah. It's like being at any parade or yeah. anything where yeah. everyone yeah. is coming together. Yeah. The amplification yeah. of that energy and that strength rather than individuals who are yeah. trying to make that difference. Yeah. It's so powerful, it's so extraordinary, yeah. and it's so beautiful. It has to kind of feel safe too. Like I found that with my journey in stepping out, it was like little by little, yeah. testing, testing, testing. When I got a job at a spiritual magazine, then it was like, okay, damn it, everyone knows now. <laughs> but I might just say it's a job. But, you know, but it's like testing, testing, and every bit of the way, it, for me it was gradual but every bit of the way of kind of coming out coming out yeah there were moments where I was bullied for it but that made me go and look at those parts that Laurie's talking about those past lives where I'd been persecuted were all coming out but then most of the time it was like people would come out of the woodwork going how amazing tell me more and then you equally feel supported so it's like then it makes it safer and safer and safer and safer and eventually you're you, you well for me I've reached a stage now <laughs> I'm doing videos, yeah. so yeah. Um, yeah. I don't really care. I mean, I still don't let you know certain members of my family on my work Facebook because they're very Catholic. Yeah. I mean, not. I mean, they all know that I'm spiritual yeah. and everything, but it's just the comments that I don't want to invite into yeah. my world. It's like, no, I don't really want you to get into a deep discussion with my clients. Thank you very much yeah. about that. So the lesson, the lesson yeah. with authenticity, though, it's like a mirror. Yeah. So when you're being authentic, you're mirroring that to another person. You're giving permission to the other person to be authentic yeah. with you as well. Absolutely. And that's how we, we start overcoming all those past life blogs that we have that yeah they're real and we need to do some digging into them but when we the, the more we rise up the more we encourage other yeah. people to look inside themselves and feel more safe to do their inner work and heal their past life struggles so they can yeah. heal which is why I'm, I'm focusing a lot on like working with people in past life regressions to heal all the trauma that they've had in past mm -hmm. lives well you've got so the expert here yeah, you two can talk about regression yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. So did you train in regression as well? Or? I trained, I did a bachelor's and master's degrees in metaphysical sciences amazing. and part of my degree was past life regression, wow. which I found is really effective. I mean, some people believe like, if, if I'm talking to someone who's like mainstream and that don't believe in past lives, I'm like, still, you're accessing some part of your subconscious story, yeah. that has this yeah. fear. So let's just work this way. Yeah. Let's not mention past lives. Yeah. It's just a memory that your subconscious has created, for example, for you, mm. if, you yeah. if you don't believe in past life, in past lives. It's a real fear. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Let's resolve the trauma. Let's heal it completely and let's move on. Yeah, absolutely. As though it's a metaphor that the mind it works. has created. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I always say. If it works, it works. Yeah. Whether the mind's created a story mm. or yeah. whatever it is, or whether you're tapping into the whole Akashic record, it could be, you know, your past life, it could be somebody else's past life, it could just be a story somebody made up, but if it's relevant and it it's helps relevant you in release your it. now. Mm -hmm. It's 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 part of your consciousness right now. It's a fear that you have that's preventing you from finding your life purpose and for taking the action steps needed in order to fulfill it and therefore you're a hindering the fulfillment of uh, our collective life purpose yeah. as light workers. Absolutely. So are you aware, have you got any cool past lives that you've had oh, that you could share with us? Too many. <laughs> can, I, so, can I ask you if you've seen this one because while you're sitting here I'm seeing you with a, it looks, I don't know if it's Roman or Phoenician, you've got a helmet on with a big red feather plume. 
So have you seen that? What do you see me as then? I don't know if you're a centurion of some kind, like a Roman maybe, or a yeah. It's like a, it's really weird. It's really come in really clear. I, I actually appreciate that you told me this right now because uh, that's, that's a story behind my past life regressions. For because <laughs> uh, for the time that I was in London working a full time job while building my business part time, yeah. I spent a lot of time working. So it was full time job and then going home exhausting myself on my own business and then doing that straight for three years so I was exhausted physically I was abusing my masculine energy mm -hmm. in some way mm -hmm. and I realized that eventually three years later three uh, exhaustion um, like outbreaks later and during that time whenever I would do a past life regression I would be a prostitute <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like I am tired <laughs> seeing myself being a prostitute on every How single past life regression I do. Oh I'm like, I need to do something about it. So as I do with every single thing I want to explore, I went to Glastonbury. <laughs> and, I, and finally, I've been going to Glastonbury for seven years. And hang on, you live on the, the island that is dedicated to Aphrodite as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, where sacred prostitution was created. <laughs> Okay. No accident there. No accident there. I love this. So I went to Glastonbury and you know the, there is the, the red stream and yeah. the white, the white, the, the white yeah. spring and yeah. they represent the divine masculine, the divine feminine. I was always, I knew both existed, but I could never find the divine masculine stream, mm -hmm. the white spring, the cave. Mm -hmm. So I would always end up in the child's well gardens, yeah. like nurt nurturing myself in the divine feminine energy which I so needed because mm -hmm. I had been ignoring it, exhausting myself. But somehow, that year that I decided to go there to work on that, I found a cave, a divine masculine cave, and I knew that I had to... Do you to know what's funny about this? What? I think it's the other way around. What do you mean? The white spring is the feminine, isn't it's it? It's not. Is it not? It's not. That's what I thought as well. Oh. That's what I thought as well, but it's the other way around. Interesting. So the red one is the feminine one, oh, right. and the white spring, that's the masculine that's one. Masculine. But for years, I thought it was the other way around. Oh, wow. And it's interesting that you thought that as well. Yeah, yeah. I recently did the research, and I found out it's the other way around. So that's I ended up in the masculine, in the cave, and I somehow knew that I should, I would find the feminine within the masculine. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. I'm like, it doesn't make sense. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense at the moment. I'm like, yeah. let's go with it. Mm -hmm. So I went in the cave. It was like being in a trance. I meditated for like what, what could have been hours. And then I got out of the cave and I had this impulse. I need to do past life regression. Mm -hmm. So I went to Hay House author Atasha Fife, who wrote Magical Past Lives. Mm -hmm. And I booked a session with her. And I did a past life regression. And there was I, a prostitute again. <laughs> but it was the first lifetime where I'm, I started that trauma right, okay. yeah. that kept the cycle the of the prostitute. Of yeah. And the, what happened basically, I, I had fallen, um, I was pregnant with one of my clients in that past life. And when I had told him uh, that uh, I was pregnant, he stabbed me with a knife in my womb and killed the baby. So from then on, I vowed to victimize my divine feminine energy, to victimize my femininity. Right and to honor and glorify the Divine Masculine. Masculine. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, in this lifetime, it manifested how? Trying to take away my homosexuality by killing myself. So, I realized, okay, that was it. Thankfully, Atasha Five guided me through some past life healing. I took that pain away, I forgave my past life self. I have never had a prostitute past life regression <laughs> since then. <laughs> But that's when, that's what, that's what started a beautiful journey for me because I realized that although I had gone through my journey, I felt that I um, got myself out of patriarchy and you know, all the thing, it was still controlling me in a subconscious way. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't controlling me uh, in the sense that it was taking away my life, but it was mm -hmm. taking my life slowly in the exhaustion of myself, yeah. in the feeling that I need to work, I need to exhaust myself, I need to struggle in order to make things happen, in order to create stuff in the world. And that's when I realized that I had exhausted my divine feminine energy within me mm -hmm. and I had this call for balance, which is what inspired me eventually to go back to Cyprus and reconnect to Aphrodite, who was all about balance. Mm -hmm. In Cyprus, they honor both Aphroditus and Aphrodite. Aphroditus was the male counterpart of Aphrodite. Okay. 
which is where hermaphro hermaphrodite, hermaphrodite. Okay. Right. comes from. So it was it interesting because you don't really hear about that side. No. You don't. Everybody knows about Aphrodite. Yeah. Mm. It's so important that we have the, the, the balance of those two. Yeah. Exactly. And so light is expressed in the world when we find the balance between the masculine and feminine masculine. energy. The way I found the feminine within the masculine was that I didn't try to deny my masculine energy. I simply had to change my perspective of what was a divine masculine because what we do now in the spiritual world, we, we realize as light workers the importance of raising the divine feminine. But in our in our desire to help the divine feminine take its rightful place next to the divine masculine, we've vilified the divine masculine, mm -hmm. we've glorified the divine feminine, and that expresses in the in the sense that all we need to do is visualize the world healing and it's going to heal. Mm. But that, that comes from the trauma yeah. that patriarchy has inflicted on us. What we need to realize is that the divine masculine isn't the bad guy. No. The way we've abused it is. And it's our duty and work as light workers to take the divine masculine and use it in a loving way. Definitely. And have it stand side by side to the divine feminine so we can really create this change that we've been working for thousands of years. Yeah, because we need, I mean, the masculine, it's the logic, it's the rational, it's the common sense bit. We need the common sense to implement the intuition. You, you can, and the execution. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, the driving yeah. force. You need the yeah. flow of the feminine, but you also need yeah. the intuition. We need, uh, exactly. If we, we need just sat here right now, divine feminine, we'd all just be useless blobs of love. <laughs> <laughs> We have to have action. We're humans. We're having a, a grounded existence. Exactly. We're human beings. We have tools. We were given this physical time-space reality to do something with it, not deny it. Mm. Absolutely. And, and still in meditation on day long. I'm not bashing meditation, by the way. I love meditating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you still have to <laughs> get up. Just shifting it around into meditate and then do something yeah. about it. Take and action. just uh, also, just to say, people watching this as well, you know, how you take action is up to you because you don't have to go out and be an activist like no. for some people it might not suit them to go on marches of and course. things like that and sometimes it is just about having a cup of tea with a friend and having a conversation but it's all about discernment we, we need to kind of discern you know where you feel safe to ex to explore these topics as well and you know yeah. it's, it's all discernment it's all kind of going with the flow, feeling what feels right. And, and people feel like yeah. taking action, you have to be an extrovert, but no. would you say that I'm an extrovert or an introvert? An extroverted introvert, I think. Yes, Same as me. exactly. Yeah. I what? recently found out that yeah. I was that too. Because yeah. when, when I ask people, what do you think I am? They all say, oh, you're an extrovert. I'm like, yeah. my, my idea of a party is being at home meditating with my angels. Yeah. <laughs> more and more, I think alone time is important. And you yeah. know, talk, we were talking about this this morning that to be able to feel safe, to be alone and feel safe, is a really amazing gift to be able to spend time alone, but know that you can go out and have a good time when you want to, but not to feel bad that you're leaving people in the lurch if you need to pull yes. back at any time. And also realize that uh, to be a light worker and to take action and to um, ch make change in the world, you don't have to be extroverted. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't need to have to go outside and march and talk no. to people as you just said. It's just a matter of finding your own extrovert or introvert ways or just introvert ways yeah. to create change through writing. Through There are so many different ways we can express our light rather than just knowing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And sharing Yeah. with, as you said, finding your tribe, sharing. Yeah. Wisdom can be imparted in so many different ways and sometimes it is just conversation. Mm -hmm. An inspirational conversation where you all suddenly realize that you're on the same page yeah. <laughs> and then magic starts yeah. to happen yeah. in that it really does and yeah. you were talking to us earlier about these new temples that are happening yes. in Cyprus yes. which I am so excited about and can't wait to go so I am loving that talk to us um, a little bit about that yes earth-based spirituality is gaining it's ground nice. in a good way which is all about um, it's all about finding balance yeah so when I came out of the past life regression and I realized that I wanted to, uh, I had to connect to the divine feminine. Right across the street was a goddess temple in Glastonbury. So I went there, I'm like, I want to become a trained priest to the goddess. Because mm -hmm. that's what they do in the, in the goddess temple over there. But after having some discussion with the priestess there, I realized that although I respected the Celtic tradition and the Celtic goddesses, they didn't relate to me and my mm -hmm. culture and my personality. 
So I'm like, I wonder if something similar exists with, with the Greek godhead. Mm -hmm. So I went home that night in Glastonbury, very magical uh, night that night. Uh, I got online, I started searching about it, and I realized that the first ever priesthood training was happening in Athens uh, wow. to train priests to Hellenic polytheism, which is similar to like the Celtic godhead, but yeah. the Greek I idea of it. And, and the reason um, they were doing the training was because uh, the Greek government was just about to legalize Hellenic polytheism as a religion. They were fighting against it for years. So I'm like, well, I'm going. So I booked my ticket, I went to Athens, I trained. And what was interesting is that although the goddess movement is big, divine feminine, for the Greek pagans, um, this is not considered to be a balanced kind of, of, uh, of spirituality. It's all about Greek architecture, Greek life, Greek religion. It's all about the balance of the masculine and the feminine. I was shocked to find out that only I, I could set up an altar to just Aphrodite if I wanted to, but the way they would do it officially was with both uh, a male god and a female god. But I think this is this is the traditional way in all yeah. of those pagans. It is it's the balance. It is the balance. It's not just the feminine. It is the yeah. balance. Yeah. But to like to, uh, it's what I've been saying earlier. To yeah. in in our urge to help the divine feminine rise, we we we've, we've, we we are on on the journey to creating an imbalance yeah. if we don't if we're not check careful, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the matriarchy isn't here to replace the patriarchy. No. It's about it's to balance, together. like yeah, to, yeah. to to see it in the same light. Yeah, I love that. Um, so I basically converted to Hellenic polytheism since then, and in nice. Cyprus right now we have the first modern temple of Zeus. It's the first Greek temple, Greek style temple in the world it's right like, now. It's like full circle, isn't it? I mean, it literally yeah. gives me goosebumps yeah. because the old ways, the origins, the it's roots back. of religions, when things were in balance and when people were honoured and when people were seen as being their own gods, their own gurus, where everybody was equal, the, the priest may be at the front holding space and creating ceremony, but they weren't saying that they were above or that they were more than, yeah. or that the people had to fund them and provide money for them and it becomes this whole exactly. big thing. So I just, I've, I'm so excited that you've shared this with us because it, it just is so hopeful that the world is waking up to the original ways of the where world. Is should be to yeah. and the world come is turning to nature. The world is turning to nature, which is naturally balanced, mm -hmm. which is naturally yeah. expressing its light in physical way. Yeah. And my geography, I studied geography as I told you earlier. Right. And my so, did, so did I actually. Did you? I did geography too. Really? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I had no idea why I was doing geography. <laughs> <laughs> so my geography teacher always used to tell me, um, it's not a matter of saving Mother Earth, yeah. it's a matter of saving the human race. Yeah. Because the the Mother before. Earth has its processes and it's going to find balance. Mm. So when we turn to Mother Earth, we can learn from that. Yeah. So going back to People don't need to convert to like pagan religions in order yeah. to honor Mother yeah. Earth. It's just a matter of finding their own personal connection to the Earth, learning through it, and really mimicking mm -hmm. the way it creates yeah. balance over and over again despite the distractions we're creating. Mm -hmm. It's managing to come back into its authenticity. Yeah. It may kick us out in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she could kick, spit us out she at could. any moment. Mm -hmm. and, like, any the moment. oceans could just engulf us or anything. Yeah. But when we partner <laughs> When we partner with nature, yeah. that's where that's when we heal, yeah. that's when we come into our authenticity, yeah. that's when we come into our purpose, and that's where we fulfill our purpose. Absolutely. And the thing with nature as well is that when you watch nature in that kind of ecosystem, only what is needed is taken. Mm. Which is you know, and everything Perfect and, balance. everything's in balance. Yeah. So, you know, whatever grows will be in sync with something else that's growing over there and whatever insects coming in. I mean, I even learned that there was a use for mosquitoes. I mean, really? who knows? Yeah, I can't remember what it is now, but it will come back to me. But apparently it's somewhere in the ecosystem there is. <laughs> but no, there is some purpose to them. And so everything, you know, and we know stories where people have come in and they've introduced a new species to try and counteract some uh, others. And the disasters that happen, and I think, Trust nature, mm -hmm. whatever else is happening, mm -hmm. if we just trust and if we watch nature and, and what happens, like, we, we can learn so much. Learn so All much. the answers we seek are in nature. Right there in front of All us. All the answers. It's just a matter of taking at times 
and taking the time to take ourselves outside of this urban jungle we, we live yeah. and connect. If it's five minutes a day, five minutes a day is enough mm -hmm. to connect with your authenticity. Yeah, absolutely. Shoes off, in the grass, hug a tree. Grounding yourself. Go to the ocean, whatever it Keep takes. It simple too. Yeah. So George, in terms of your work, yeah. so you and I have had this conversation yes. a little bit. <laughs> I haven't because he's new. <laughs> going to stay. Yeah, they don't like each other at all. <laughs> yeah, they, there's no connection going on here. So tell us about what you offer, because you work online predominantly now, don't you? So you're a global... I work, yes. I run an online business purely, which was always my dream, which means I can access people from all over the world. Maybe. And what I do, I work only exclusively with light workers mm -hmm. who have realized they're light workers, but they have fears and obstacles that prevent them from owning up to their power and taking the action needed to follow their purpose. Mm -hmm. So I help those light workers hone in on their purpose, not just say, I'm here to change the world, I'm mm -hmm. here to make the world a kind of better place, to find the specific, hone in on the specific purpose they came in to fulfill and then overcome the obstacles, mm -hmm. such as fear of what people may think, such as um, lack of confidence or feeling I'm not good enough or fear of success or fear of failure mm -hmm. in order to overcome that. And I do that in, um, in a few ways, one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, such as past life regressions, such as tarot readings, such as um, like soul sessions connecting with their elemental guides and letting guidance uh, flow through, mm -hmm. as well as online courses. Yeah, um, Yeah, which I'm doing a course right now on the Divine Masculine Rising. Amazing. Which is Perfect. rising. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So a variety of online courses plus one-on-one -on -one services. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. I love I love your take on the divine masculine and I think it's a really important point to make. And I love that you're doing a course dedicated to it because the, as we yeah. the masculine needs support as the feminine rises. The men need support. We were talking about it exactly. in, a, in another interview mm. the other day. That the men also need support because a lot of emotions are coming up and our old way of living they doesn't don't know how show to them it. how to handle it. Mm. Yep. Yeah, or how to be authentically themselves. It's like have to play the role like you did. Exactly, and even so many women are having struggle um, honoring their divine masculine, and rather than respecting it and using it in a in a productive way, yeah. because of patriarchy has trained us mm -hmm. to abuse the masculine, yeah. rather than partner up with the masculine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just a matter of healing our relationship and redefining how we start working with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. So, how can people find you? What do you, what do you, let's share all your yes. websites. We'll share links below as yes. well. Best way to find me is uh, Instagram, which is at George Lizos, uh, and my website georgelizos.com. Oh, and tell us about this Instagram TV because you predicted this, right? Oh my God, I totally predicted Instagram <laughs> we TV. We need to move it the six days before it happened. Six days before I was on the beach, I was just lounging with my cousin, and I had a psychic kid. I'm like, <gasps> Sophia. There will be Instagram TV soon coming with an Instagram and I'm just gonna like um, Instagram about it just so I have proof. So I took a picture of this guy and I wrote on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the Instagram story. I predict Instagram TV is coming out soon with an Instagram. Six days later, Instagram announced Instagram TV. I'm like, ah, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so is the George Liesl show on Instagram TV now? It is, yes. yes I've done my first show on the day Instagram TV launched telling about my prediction. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> and it's basically, it's gonna be a, another tool for me, another a channel to share long form videos, right. again with tools and processes, so that we don't just feel our life, that we work our life in practical mm -hmm. ways. Yeah. Helping light workers really own up to their skills and take the action needed to change the world. Amazing. So we the world is a better place for having you in it. Oh, thank you oh so God. much. Oh my God, thank God you had that opinion, <laughs> George. Thank That's God I had that opinion from you and I stay here. I know, I, I know. know, amazing. So thank you so, so oh. much for joining thank us. Thank you so much for having coming. me. It's I had amazing. so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. Come it's again. Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll just we'll come out there. I think we're we going to come to we're we're gonna gonna come come Cyprus. Yes, and yes. I'll take you all around the oh. goddess temples. Amazing. Done deal. Definitely. And uh, thank you all for watching Awake Ones. <laughs>